Today, let's get to listen to stories of triumph amidst failures, courage despite fear, strength through weakness, and even the occasional hopeful cheer from personal punny experiences. I am your host, RK, and this is the Better You Podcast. What is up, fam? Welcome to today's episode of the Better You Podcast. Coach RK here. And in today's episode, we answer yet again some of, well, one of the many questions that people have when it comes to starting off their fitness journey. And this is probably one of those questions that you would have tried to Google yourself, or you may have seen as well on Google if you did start to ask questions. I know for a fact, a lot of us really do just, well, whether fortunately or unfortunately, we tend to really look into the internet and go online to just basically see if there is an answer to our question. So that is what we shall be doing today again. All right. And as I have been answering these different questions for the past few weeks, again, guys, these are answers that are based on my own experience. So, you know, please do not quote me on it. Well, you can because I said it. But um, to tell you frankly, a lot of different fitness professionals will say other things, have different opinions themselves. Again, the answers to these questions that I say to you all are always based on my own experience. I've always believed that, um, you know, as a trainer, as a coach, whatever it is that I preach is whatever it is that I have also done. So in any case, let's begin today's episode by letting you guys in on what is today's question. And today's question that we will try to answer for you all is when I train do I really need equipment all right and that is actually a pursuit that many of us or a question that many of us had to answer especially during the time we were all locked up all right and to tell you frankly a lot of these different questions also are possibly have been you know asked even pre-pandemic but it was so much of an issue <laughs> for many people especially again as i mentioned um when a lot of us were put in lockdown, you couldn't go outside. So if you were the type of person like myself who had to go to a gym facility or is always used to going to the gym to continuously have a training session or continue to um, finish out a fitness program, um, you know, it would have been something that was very crucial for you to be able to continue to train. You needed equipment, you needed um, weight plates, you needed dumbbells, you needed barbells and all that good stuff from the gym. So the question here again is, would a training program be successful even if you did not have any equipment the short answer is yes the long answer is what we <laughs> will be discussing today all right guys because for a fact let's let's all <laughs> go back in time and recognize that gyms are a thing of you know modern times and 
many different types of fitness equipment have evolved through the years and so during the time of our ancestors there weren't really that type of really heavy equipment that they used and what would they use they would use whatever it was that was available to them wherever they were <laughs> and for a good example there are many people in different parts of the world um, who actually lift stones, all right? Um, it is something I believe that originated somewhere in Scotland or in that area of Europe. And so, you know, if you carry a stone, what is it? It's not necessarily a type of fitness equipment that everyone gets to use, right? However, it is a type of resistance that can challenge you. And so what are gym equipment or machines inside of a fitness facility? Those are pretty much created for us to be challenged. And so the factor here is, can we challenge the body even without equipment? And again, as I did mention, yes, we can challenge the body even without equipment. Um, the main focus here though, for today, I would like for us to all focus on body weight training because a lot of people tend to believe that body weight training is something that isn't really effective but to tell you frankly if you are able to fully utilize a program that is all just body weight exercises you will still have an impact and a change on your own physique, all right? Um, many people will pertain to this as calisthenics. Um, some people, you know, would just simply call it body weight training. Um, some people could also refer to it as circuit training. That is also something that can be utilized when you do a body weight or resistance through your own body type of training program all right um as an example everyone and quite quite classic type of movements i give you a push-up or a press-up and sit-ups all right um those are two or some of the very basic, quote unquote, basic body weight exercises that many are very familiar with, right? But to tell you frankly, if you go search on the internet, there are a lot of tutorials or how-to videos or how-to, um, you know, directions how you can perform a push-up or a sit-up properly, all right? And with that in mind, you already kind of think to yourself like, you know, um, if that's the case, then why <laughs> would people refer to these exercises as easy to do? If it really is easy to do, wouldn't it be something that we are all super familiar with already that we do not need to ask certain people <laughs> to demonstrate it to us, right? So um, my only idea here going back to today's topic is many people put down body weight training as something that is not as useful to any fitness program, which I do not agree with because 
again, it would actually depend on your own physical um, physical fitness level. And if you are someone who is starting out their fitness journey, being able to perform these different types of body weight training exercises are crucial for you to be able to level up your own training program. Um, a lot of people think that, oh, if I do like 10, 20 reps of this, that's, you know, that's not much. It's, it's not challenging me. Um, the thing to put into consideration here is that you have to really perform each repetition of each movement in your body weight training program as precise as you can with regard to the form of that specific exercise. So let's say you do 10 repetitions of a push-up, but you do the form sloppily, of course, would you really expect change to happen to your physique or for you to have changes happen to your body if that happens of course not right so again the main issue here is if you do not use equipment what is a number one factor that you need to watch out for and that is it when you do body weight training body weight exercises you have to be very precise with each repetition and stick to the form for each of these movements now another factor that you could also consider would be the volume of each of these movements of course if you do a body weight program don't expect to stick with a weight resistance type of training let's say like in powerlifting, we do a very popular um, type of programming, which is a five set by five repetition um, training program. And if you do, of course, a body weight exercise of a squat, let's say. So comparing to a squat with weight on my back, doing it five by five is a challenge but if i do it with just my own body weight it wouldn't really be that much of a challenge even if i precisely stick to my squat form all right so this is the time when you need to really level up or impose on yourself a much bigger type of volume training um when we say volume it means that you have to either increase the number of sets that you put it or the number of repetitions that you would like to finish <laughs> all right so for the five by five um type of training let's say i would equate it to possibly a five set type of program. I can start off maybe with 10 repetitions per set. And then gradually I can increase it to 15 reps, 20 reps, depending on possibly how you feel for the moment you can adjust it. That is also another key ingredient here. When you do your body weight training and you do a type of volume or a bigger volume of repetitions and sets, what you can actually do is provide or write, write off a program, especially if you're doing this um, on your own. You can write off a program with, let's say, a fixed, number of repetition uh sorry a, a fixed number of sets so let's say you do three sets for week one four four sets for week two 
five sets for week three and four. That's what you can do. And then you can start off with three sets of 10 and then move on to four sets of 15 and then five sets of 20. So there's also a progression for these types of programs. It doesn't mean that if it is only a body weight type of training program that you feel you know the repetitions aren't enough i have to go for the bigger number of repetitions of course your body still needs to adapt to that type of programming and so you have to always always begin with even uh, a deloaded type of startup week at least all right and when i say deload it can feel like you're only giving maybe 50 to 60 percent of what you're used to and that is fine all right we can probably do a different um type of episode for this type of topic but as I mentioned, yes, again, even if it is only, sorry, not only, even if we are prioritizing just the resistance that comes from our own body, we still need to progress it gradually. All right, guys. So as I mentioned, these different factors are key to making your body weight training a success aside from making sure that your form is in pristine condition <laughs> making sure that each repetition is a perfect form in perfect form rather and aside from making sure that you also give a bit more volume into your program you could also play with how fast or how slow you are able to perform each of these exercises and movements all right now you're probably wondering well how how is it even you know relevant <laughs> to the training program Actually, even with resistance training with actual weights or using equipment, this has become quite a popular choice when it comes to programming. Why? Because we are always, again, it's not just the form that we sometimes sloppily do. Sometimes it is also how fast we do each repetition, all right? And so, um, aside from making sure that your form is in great shape, <laughs> is done in a great way, another way for you to also play along with that is for you to do each repetition either slowly or as fast as you can. Now, with that in mind, of course, your program will also shift each time you train. And what happens? Your body is challenged as well, all right? In a different way, again, okay? Um, as I mentioned that phrase, challenging our bodies is always done in many types of creative ways. All right, guys, so our bodies tend to be actually very smart in a way, all right? Um, and I don't mean it in, you know, mindfulness and brain function. Uh, I mean it uh, in a way how our body moves and how our body reacts to different types of resistances when it comes to physical fitness all right our bodies as i've 
mentioned a few times already in many different episodes, our bodies are pretty much machines. And so when we do a specific type of training program and our bodies are so used to it, what happens? There becomes a, there will be times when our change So there won't be too much change when it comes to how our body functions or if our body weight drops, things like that, all right? So what does that mean? When when that happens, it means that we need to change up the challenges that we let our body experience, all right? I believe I learned this from one of my teachers before in college, and they mentioned to us in a class that when you do a training program, one of the best ways for you to know that your training program is done in progression and as best you can, that the program makes makes it something that would be effective for a client or for a gym goer that you make a program for is making sure that the body is not only challenged but also there's a shock factor for the body all right i know it's kind of a little scary (laughs) to Describe it as shocking the body, but essentially that is what you want to do, especially when you exactly where there's a tattoo or you know the changes that are happening how you come to right? So that in itself, when we go back to changing the tempo, meaning how fast or how slow each body weight movement is done. Essentially, that's what you do each time you think, alright? So you can have maybe, as an example, let's say you do a Monday, Wednesday, Friday type of training program. Let's say you do Mondays as a normal type of tempo, the usual way that you would perform each of your movements. You can do your Wednesday training as fast as you can each movement as fast as you can, all right? And then for your Friday training session, you can do it as slow as your body can handle, all right? So those are the ways where you can change up your tempo and make sure that your body weight training program is something that will still become an effective way for you to train, all right? So just with these different situations and scenarios that you can tweak into your own training program, in essence, you already have proven that you will be able to train even without heading to the gym. Um, as, as I've always mentioned and as I've always been very passionate about, we don't necessarily need to invest and spend so much money on these different gym equipment, you know, buying dumbbells and barbells and all that stuff. Sometimes what you essentially really need is just to push yourself to train, all right? Just being able to train and commit yourself to that routine, increasing the habit day in and day out, have that maybe investing in the equipment is the next stage to your partner all right so again guys if you are the type who have still been asking yourself oh should i train now start becoming physically active or should i wait first until I have all the equipment out there, all right? Sometimes what happens is you buy the equipment and what happens is just collect dust. 
wherever it is in your house, in your office, or wherever you choose to put food, right? Be more committed and more consistent first before you take the next step of spending all that money. Because what happens when you spend all that money and you don't get to use the equipment? You just scratch everything <laughs> all together, okay? So just making sure that you stay physically active and use your own body first as resistance is a very key way for you to be able to continuously progress in your own fitness journey. So again, the short answer is yes. <laughs> you can train, you can begin without the equipment, guys, all right? Don't be afraid. It is quite hard especially if you want to do a full push-up and a full setup all at once all together okay it takes time and to me i've always believed that once your body weight exercises are perfected that's the best that's really the best time for you to go ahead enroll in that gym or invest on those equipment that you see online <laughs> i'm sure you guys see those but yeah making sure that you stick with the habit as much as you can with the time that you have is very very important first step all right so once you have that then i'm sure it wouldn't even matter if you invest on the equipment or the gym membership all together. All right. So guys, I hope that that today's episode has become a helpful episode, <laughs> an ep a very helpful show for you guys to have watched and to have heard today. All right, guys. I hope that also if you've made it to the end of this episode and you haven't subscribed to the channel, please click on that subscribe button because it really does help the channel a lot. All right. So thank you again, guys, for joining me in today's blabbering. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for joining me for today's episode of the Better You Podcast. Again. This is little old Coach RK here reminding you to never give up on your movement journey because it's never too late to move. Bye, guys. See you again next week.